In trying to understand the principle of the autogyro, two questions arise in the minds of the curious. It is easy to see that mechanically gyrating windmill blades above the fuselage of a plane will develop lift, just as rotating propeller in front develops pull. However, since the name autogyro indicates that these blades turn automatically once the machine has left the ground, it is difficult to understand or see how in turning automatically without power from the engine, they exert a lifting force on the plane. And above all, it's hard to see why they turn. To make these two points clear, let me ask you to consider for a moment the ordinary airplane. You all doubtless know that it is the positive pressure on the underside of the wings plus the suction or vacuum created over the top of the wings, which keeps the airplane from falling. These two forces, exerted by the air currents as the plane moves rapidly forward, are caused by this peculiar shape of the wings. You see, each of these autogyro blades is in reality a miniature airplane wing. In revolving as they do, each exerts a lifting force, or to be more accurate, a sustaining force, in the same way as does the ordinary airplane wing when it is driven forward. Now we come to the more difficult question of why the blades rotate automatically. We may sum up the various reasons by saying that the inventor, Juan de la Sierra, discovered that blades of a specific design, correctly set and hinged to their central hub, would, under the force of gravity, acting through the weight of the ship, rotate continuously and unfailingly as long as the machine is in the air. The energy which keeps these blades revolving is this force of gravity always tending to draw the machine toward the ground. In relation to the air around it, an autogyro is always falling. There is a continuous air pressure on the underside of the blades which causes them to rotate. In reality, the blades have no lift. They simply sustain the ship exactly as do the fixed wings of the airplane. To gain or even to maintain altitude, we must have forward motion, and this is supplied by the propeller. However, we can shut off the propeller in still air, and the ship will settle to the ground more slowly than does a parachute. A very important feature of Sierva's invention is the hinging of the rotor blades to their central hub. By this simple device, Sierva equalized the sustaining power of the advancing and retreating blades even in forward flight, and eliminated the gyroscopic properties of the rotor, which would have made the ship unmanageable. Because these blades are free to fold up like a ruined umbrella, you may wonder what prevents that very thing while the ship is in the air. The reason is very simple. While the ship is flying, the blades are always turning at about 130 revolutions a minute. And at this rate, or at this speed, centrifugal force is very strong. It holds out these blades straight and lithe, with a strength many times that required to support the ship. So much for theory and models. Let's now see something of what the autogyro can accomplish in the air. Before the autogyro leaves the ground, the pilot must connect the engine to the rotor with, by means of a self starter to get the blades going at their rotational speed of 130 RPM. After that, he takes off, just as the ordinary airplane does, but he must disconnect the engine from the starter, from the rotor, before he takes off. 